Hey, it's Frank D. Tommaso. Welcome back to my podcast, Real Talk with Frank D. Tommaso. On today's episode, I'm doing something a little different. I'm excited to have longtime friend and famous artist Scott Lebedo. Scott's known for his incredible patriotic artwork, especially the American flag paintings that you see everywhere. They're in Staten Island. They're actually in every state of the country. So, Scott, welcome. It's great to have you on the show. Good to see you, my man. It's been a long time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you look the same. Thank you. Well, you do too. Just a few uh, gray follicles. It's the neighborhood. I don't have any follicles left. I wish I could tell you I did. <laughs> Listen, you got to grow your eyebrows out and then comb them. Oh over. my God! So, you know, um, that's from an artist's point of view. <laughs> well, you know what? I do have some hair if I let it grow, but it's not going to be a heck of a lot. But anyway, um, it's great to have you on the show, and uh, we've got a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. And like I said in my intro, this is different because normally I talk about real estate stuff. And um, it gives me pleasure to get into some stuff with you today that I think people would want to hear about. Like, for instance, how you got started. Now, everybody knows you've been on TV. You've been all over the country. Right. A lot of people, people know, know what you stand for. But how did this all come about? Yeah. It's, well, I've always been an artist. You know, even when we were younger, you know, we were up in the woods. I was building things with rocks and twigs and trees. And, you know, I always had that, uh, the gift to, to create and uh, so I was always doing, you know, wild stuff. You remember my wild paintings. I used to do these really abstract, crazy, wild monster paintings, just testing everything out. And then uh, it was back in the 90s, you know, people know me as this crazy, massive, patriotic artist. And how that came to be is I went, you know, I went into the big city. It's New York City. This is where, this is where you make it. You know, as Frankie said, you make it here, you make it anywhere. And it's a big art community in, in New York City, probably one of the biggest. So I went to go find my calling of like, where am I going to fit in, you know, and I was, excuse my language here, but I was fucking shocked how the creative community, okay, was disrespecting our flag, our military, and everything America. And it broke my heart because us artists have more freedom than anybody because we get to test the boundaries of the First Amendment. We get to abuse the First Amendment. So artists, more than anyone else, should be out of their minds patriotic. And I saw this hatred, you know, blaming America for this and that. You know, every so many generations, patriotism takes a dip. You know, whether it was the 60s with, you know, uh, the Vietnam War. And then in the 90s, there was another dip. I mean, we didn't see it because we live in Staten Island, New York. Dongan Hills, where everybody's flag was out because we're all working class veterans, cops, firemen, just like any little town in a little America. So that's why it hurt me because here I am, my, you know, my grandma's house, the flag was there, always fresh, crisp flag in front of the house while we were playing in the yard. So I, at that moment, I got punched in the stomach with my calling. And I said, this, this, the art world is like destroying and pissing, stepping on the flag in the gallery as a welcome mat. And, and it just blew my fucking mind. And I said, here's my calling. Fuck you. I don't need you. I don't need to succumb to your isms, okay, your elitist ways to tell me what to do and to be so disrespectful to the hand that feeds you mm -hmm. your, your fucking right to create. And that's it. And I said, I'm going to bring this flag back to life by using art. I'm going to paint it on the side of buildings. I'm going to paint it giant. I'm going to paint it on cars. And, and it was like pulling teeth. You know, I don't know, I don't, you know, but I kept at it. I kept at it. I kept at I it. I think it's really something how people would actually hold back on that. Like if you're proud of your country, yeah. wouldn't you want to see the flag? It's, yeah, not, it's I mean, not like you're putting up something negative. What makes this country absolutely perfect is that she is not perfect. We are just a small, young, young kid on this world stage. We're only 250 years old, 240 something years old, but yet it's the greatest greatest invention of civilization was America. And that flag, you know, people, my critics ripped the shit out of me. He's a jingoist, he's a Nazi underneath that flag, that symbolic thing of oppression. I said, I'm here to promote what's good about that flag. Yeah, we got problems. We had racism. We had black people had to sit on the back of the bus. That's disgusting. But we came through it. The gay community fighting for their, you gotta fight for stuff. That's the beauty about America. You don't just come here and like, what's happening now is here. Here, yeah, this is all yours. Free. Take it. It's all yours. Don't pick up. Don't have any incentive to do anything. 
that you're on the government's dime. You're on a taxpayer's dime. We're here to help you when you come here. Always. But you get off your feet after a while and you have incentive. Whether it's opening up a fucking hot dog stand or you want to be an astronaut. That's what that flag represents. It represents like no other place in the world. So my job, okay, is I didn't have the balls to fight in, the, in, in war. I didn't have the balls. But God gave me my weapons, which is not a bayonet and a rifle, paint and brushes. So let me ask you this question. You decided a few years ago, it might be more than a few years ago, but you decided to travel around the country and paint these huge flags in every state. What gave you that idea, and what was the reception from traveling to all these different states? It's the greatest thing I ever did. You know, continue to do it. I do it every five, about five, every five years. So I did three fifty state tours already, and I, I actually started. The, I got the idea when Hurricane Katrina in two thousand five. I drove a truckload of supplies down there with Project Hospitality, and. Uh, they all left after we dropped the supplies off, and I was like, there was people sitting on the roof of the house that was a foot off the ground. The rest of the house was gone. I'm like, I can't leave. I'm an able body in shape. I got to stay. So I stayed for a week, volunteered, slept on, on a lawn in a, a ragged sleeping bag, and just helped people out. And then before I left, I told a friend of mine down, I said, get me a rooftop that's, that's you know, in the middle of the destruction, where people could see it from the street, but also the air, because... The military was just coming in. The, the media was coming around in the helicopters. So I found this one house. It was just tar paper. Everything else was off. And I painted. I got paint. And I painted this beautiful flag on the roof. And people came around that just lost their whole lives. And here's this nut from New York City painting an American flag on this roof in this devastated area. And it brought them together. And that was the point of me painting that flag, was that as bad as things get in this country, we are Americans. We pull together and we will get the fuck out of this mess. And I drove out into the sunset after that on a 20-something hour bus ride home, busted out of my mind, and it hit me. I said, we're in the middle of a major war right now. I'm going to do this in every state because I just realized what that painting this crazy man on this roof painting this flag that's that's not a canvas that you would normally see but most people you're saying people came around you oh in yeah. unity yes how was that in the other states well that's what kicked it off i said i gotta do this in every state so i scrounged up a couple of thousand bucks a friend of mine gave me this beat up old chevy and i just packed up and went on the road and just banged on doors in every state i went into like military areas military bases because Guys and girls were flying out to war, and guys and girls were coming back. So it was like a uh, Godspeed to where you're going, and welcome home. And then just getting into a town and letting, you know, this crazy New York. I'm down south, this crazy, thick New York accent that, you know, I'm Sicilian. I, 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 I light my cigarette, <laughs> well, and I, I know right really away. can. So I am the typical New Yorker, and they're like, what is this guy? wants to paint my roof? What the hell? And finally, once I got it done... The next day, it was all over the news, and everybody knew why I was doing it. It was this creative way of supporting the troops. And then every state was the same way. I went in as nobody, and I left as Elvis. And the community just embraced it, you know, because here's this crazy son of a bitch doing this. So, you know. by and large, everybody embraced it. Oh, yeah. Regardless oh, yeah. of what their political nope, agenda nope. is. There was most, you know, I've been very political for the last uh, so because back in the 90s when I started the artwork, the, the patriotic artwork. I also started this activist campaign, you know, pro-American activism. Most activists are on the, on the left side, and that's fine. I, I have so many friends that are, and I respect them. That's the First Amendment. God bless it. Mm -hmm. Protest all you want, sure. even if I don't agree with what you're protesting, mm -hmm. but I got your back for doing right. it, so as long as you don't punch somebody in the face for wearing sure. a red right. MAGA hat. And now I was such a non, and I emphasize that, you know, that this is non-political. This is about our troops. This is about America. This is about supporting the men and women brave enough to fight for my crazy ass. And how, why are you so patriotic? Why do you support the military and the veterans, Scott? Because I'm living the life like nobody's business. Yeah, so how can I not embrace and love these men and women? Right. Every musician, every artist, every writer, every dancer, every actor should worship the men and women of our armed forces. And when I see them, you know, see, I, let me calm down. All right, give, give me a fight up. <laughs> I know you can go on and on and on. A little bit. Well, how do, you, how do you view it locally here in New York City? We have pretty diverse groups right here in New York City. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah. how was your art taken here? Well, the art world threw me under the bus. You know, I told you that. They know who I am. 
you know, you know, you see me on Fox. You know, I've been on every news channel. In the oh country. yeah, I've been in yeah. front of every newspaper. Sure. You know, I, they know me, but they refuse to acknowledge me because I did not succumb to their agenda, and that just proves the hypocrisy of the arts and theater and Hollywood. If you're in Hollywood and you come out and say, "Hey, I just bought Trump," or even if I'm a Republican, you get the part of the stock boy in the X-Lax commercial. That's what you get. You don't get the the star role. You don't. It's it's like that. We all know it is. You know, but and and again, I'm fine with it. I live with it because I created my own element outside the art world, and they hate me even more for that because I've become. You know, I'm kind of famous. Well, you, you know, know what? Because you did your own thing. You I didn't did follow suit like but everybody that's else. But they're supposed to worship me for that. Right. But they hate me for it. Well, they hate you because, because you went a different direction. Because of my political ideology. You know, I'm a NASCAR fan. I'm a heterosexual. I don't pronounce my R's. I'm from Staten Island. That's who I am. I'm a real New Yorker. You meet these New Yorkers. They, I, I'm in the city. I mean, oh, yeah, I'm a New Yorker. You, know, you just moved here from Quebec three months ago. You hear this fucking accent? I'm a fucking New Yorker. You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's I love it's it. what it is. It's what it is. I'm proud of it. I don't, you know, I get looks at these gallery openings I go to, and they're like, look, this, you know, like I'm a black sheep, and I fucking love it. <clears throat> and really, who is the black sheep? I love it. Right. But the, in the old days, if you were the black sheep in the arts, you became the superstar. Yeah. You know, you put yeah. Christ in urine with taxpayers' money. Right. The guy's a superstar. Well, elephant dung on Jesus. Yeah. yeah. And superstar. that makes you famous. Right. 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 So I didn't, I went the opposite way. And, and, I'm, and I'm happy with that. My, I bring artwork to the masses of people who also were shunned from the arts because it's uh, they take the taxpayers' money and they put Christ in urine. You know, they put, you know, homoerotic art. And stuff. Again, I support all art. But when you do that against the people that take, they give you the money for the arts, you, you bite in the hand. And I don't do that. I don't take grants. People say, Scott, I'll, I'll help you write a grant. You can get like 50 grand. For, so I don't want the taxpayers' money. I got. I need money. I borrowed from. I borrowed from Frankie. I'm doing a project. I need a couple of grand for some paint. And that's the way. I don't go to. I don't go taxpayers. I get it privately, or I do it on my own. I sell a painting and I do my own. Look, thing. you know what? <clears throat> Let me say this. You do have your own right, like you said, your First Amendment. But your artwork is great. Well, thank it, you. I mean, and I'm not just saying that. It, it truly is. I mean, I haven't seen any American flags done. As good, not even close to the work that you do. So there has to be some sort of togetherness throughout the art community instead of the division that you're talking about. It'll Just for the change. appreciation of how creative your work is. It's great. And I know it's not all you do. You do other, wor other works yeah. too. But I mean, it's truly special. Yeah. Most artists, you know, yeah, a lot of them do nice work, you know, and we know that. We're going to give credit where it's due. But I haven't seen anybody step up and do the American flag, with such love and respect. And that's why those pieces are awesome. It's the love and the passion I have. I've done 10,000 flags maybe throughout my last 25 years when I first started doing it. And every one I paint, I'm painting one in my studio when I go home, I'm doing a commission for somebody. And it's, I'm not like bored, like, oh, another flag. It's like the first time I painted a flag because I know what it means. The, I, I've been to the Louvre in Paris, I flirted with the Mona Lisa face to face. The Mona Lisa. I touched the Van Gogh. I reached over and I touched the broke, the painful thick brush strokes of Van Gogh. I gazed at the Sistine Chapel in Rome. I was there. These are the masters of the world. But the greatest work of art in the entire world, the most powerful, beautiful, sexy, meaningful work of art is the Star Spangled Banner. It is a work of art. See, we don't look at it as a work. We look at it as a symbol. It's a flag. It's a piece of cloth. Somebody created that. And what the meaning behind it is, is more, more meaningful than anything anywhere. It's that flag. I didn't invent it. See, Scott's the flag man. I didn't invent it. This is my calling to promote it and celebrate her through a Let different Let me ask medium. you this. How much do you think you can change people by your art, to call for more unity. Because I know you're not going to stop. No. I know this is your quest. And you have a motive to get people to come together and unite through your art. Yes. It's, I mean, I've changed many people. I've taught so many people by using my art. You know, 
Uh, what, what, look, look, what, Dad, Dad, what, look at that giant, beautiful, three-dimensional, colorful flag on that old, dilapidated building that says VFW. What is that, Dad? And then the father gets to say, that's the American flag. That building underneath that roof are the greatest men and the women of the world, the veterans. They gave us the right to go to the Yankee Stadium where we're on the way to right now to watch the ball game. It's them. That's why that flag is there. That kid will remember that. I get letters from school. I, you know how many times I do performances at school or I paint a school? For the last 20-something years, I get letters. They write me cards and they, I meet their families. Or I meet these kids 20 years later that are successful. And, and there's, Scott, I put my flag up every day in front of my house because of you. You know, So, that, so my, I'm doing my job. You are. You know, I'm doing my job. You are. I think but you still, are. But still, you got these assholes that are still going to burn down the burn the flag, piss on it, because they think, you know, they're biting again. They're biting the hands of fear. You could protest all you want. I told you. I worship you protest, even if it, I don't believe in it. But when you abuse that flag, you're not getting anyone to pay attention to your cause. All you're doing is upsetting so much. You're upsetting the men and women who fought for you to burn that flag. It's, it, that's what burns my ass. Go to the Capitol, get arrested there like I have. Go to City Hall, protest, and get arrested like I have to make your statement. You know, have, put some balls on, mm -hmm. is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. no, put some fucking balls on. Burn the flag. That's a simple, stupid, coward thing to do. Get in your truck and drive three states away to that cause that you want to fight for and get your ass dirty. Yeah, I'm on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then we're going to go out and burn the flag because I got all my friends behind me who believe in the same thing. Do that in front of a veteran, in front of the, the, these amputees that I deal with every day with the Silla Foundation. Triple quad amputees, 20 years old these kids are, that worship that flag. And they got their asses blown the fuck up. And they still worship that flag. And your 20-year-old, 20 25-year-old punk ass is going to burn a flag. And all it does is piss off and hurt that guy that lost his fucking legs for you. Makes me fucking Scott, nuts. I want to ask you this. <clears throat> what do you have? Don't give me any coffee. <laughs> what do you have? <laughs> I think you had enough. And I don't drink Did coffee. Did you have espresso maybe? Nothing. No, I can't. I what, do you have, what do you have planned for the future? Anything cool for your art? Anything coming up? That you, Any brainstorming? Yeah, you I, got, I got so many. As a matter of fact, I'm right in the midst of waiting to hear back from the, the governor. I, you know, if you remember the whole Cabrini, Mother Cabrini fiasco, uh, the city put out a call to... Uh, a contest to for for great American women right. mm -hmm. in New York City and uh, to build statues of them. And Mother Cabrini, okay, who was my family's mm -hmm. patron saint, cured my grandmother, great grandmother, and a wonderful woman took care of the orphans, Italian immigrant orphans, which came in. And the, the mayor and his wife said no, even though she won hands down. Mm. They said no, and it was a big uproar. The Italian community went nuts. Cuomo said, "Yeah, like the Christopher Columbus." Yes, yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. So Cuomo put together a commission, and they had a call to artists for a big proposal. So I submitted my design, and uh, we're waiting to hear back any day now. So who's, who are they going to select? My chances are slim, again, because I'm apparently a controversial figure uh, because of whatever, which I don't think I am. But uh, So that's something I'm, I'm hoping that comes through. But if that does not, I still got so many other uh, big projects. I'm going to do another 50-state tour uh, probably next year after the election, because the election is, you know, this is, I'm here. I ain't going anywhere. I'm going to be here. Uh, That's exciting. Yeah. That's one thing that I've always wanted to do. Just, I've seen a lot of states, but not all of them. Dude, to drive to the middle of the Northwest in the Colorado, I mean, uh, in like Montana, and just pull over and just park my ass, get my tent, my fire pit, my whiskey in the middle of nowhere, and just camp out. Get in. You can't get more peaceful than that. So the people I meet, this, it's the people. It's all America. And what are Americans? They're people from all over the fucking world. Everyone says, Americans, they're just Americans. We're not, that's what, again, back to the whole flag and why we are the greatest countries. Yeah. Because we're not Italy. We're not Germany. We're not India. We are all, every fucking thing. Right. And people forget this. Of everything. And young people forget this. Right. You know, and like, Americans, they're so, you're talking about your brother. You know, you, it's that's what makes it great. The, the, mm -hmm. the diversity is insane. And the travel the country, it's, yeah, it's the beauty and the cliffs and the mountains, but it's the people. I sleep in the backyard in their barn if I don't have any place to stay. You know, they feed me and then I'm on the road again. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing. What do you have coming up? Any art shows? Any? Uh, yes, actually. Um, I usually have, 
you know, every year or two I have a huge show and I haven't had one in a while and I, I blow out. It's, it's, uh, I do great. I get people pack the place and they sell, sell really well and I always give part of it to charity. Um, but I am planning this big art show in the city, okay, which I'm actually I'm going to talk to you about after this. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be it's And how new, are you going to advertise it? Uh, word of mouth, social media. But your website and, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's no, your website? ScottLobedo.com. Okay. S C O T T L O B A I D O dot com. I got some cool merchandise on there. People can buy my prints. I got artist signed prints. I got some uh, POTUS 45 stuff to purchase, t shirts and whatever. But this big show is going to be all my brand new cool flag, giant flag art, and paintings, pro paintings of the great president that is now currently in office, Donald Trump. So it has never been done before in this city. This liberal city. Oof, so wow. <laughs> it's going to be. That's a nervy thing to do, but I wish you a lot of luck with that. It's going to be interesting. I, and I You're going to see it. It's I hope. Be I'm going to be there, and I hope you're pleasantly surprised. Because when people come and see the artwork, they're going to be like blown away. Yeah. It's, it it's, is that good. Thank you. And to thank all the you. listeners today, if you haven't seen Scott's artwork, go on and check it out. Go to scottlebedo.com. And you're going to see, it's not just the American flag. He does a lot of other art pieces, too, and they're all terrific. So let me ask you this to finish up here. Your prediction for the presidential race the end of the year. Is oh, that an easy one? That's a tough one, man. I don't know. <laughs> Come on. It's, it's a cakewalk, just like I predicted in 2016. Again, why? How do I know? Why did I do interviews from every media outlet from around the world that came to Etsy me? Because they saw that. How did this guy know? Because I travel the country in 2015 through America, and I heard these people, and I knew no matter what Donald Trump did, he could have mm -hmm. cut a puppy's head off on stage the night before the election, they were voting him in. And the same thing is going to happen this time around, more so. Why? Because the left, and I tell my liberal friends, and I got a lot of them, I said, your fucking problem is you went too far left. See? Left, right, we balance. When you went too far, you go too far left? You're going to get more conservative. How many people walked away from the Democratic Party on Trump's wagon? The guy's doing phenomenal. Because you cannot take anything away. He's doing more than any other president has done. The shit come out of his mouth? I don't give a shit. It's not what a man says. It's what a man does. Obama, great man. Cried when he won the election. Because we got a black president. It moved me. It was very moving. I hated his policies. Spoke eloquently. But he didn't get shit done. A man that speaks like I'm speaking, I get shit done. This guy gets shit done, and that's why he's going to be the president of the United States. My prediction for the nomination is going to be Amy, what's the heck's her name? Blo Klobuchar. Klobuchar. She's going to be the nominee. Trust She's me. going to be Bernie. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. People can, he, Bernie cannot beat Donald Trump. She can't. She, not that she's going to beat him. Nobody's going to beat him. But the best chance they have is this, this girl, Amy, that nobody knows about. She's the middle of the road. She's pleasant. I think, you know, again, I'm not voting, I'm voting for Trump big time. I'm on the train. I'm on the big time. I'm in the, the engine with him. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be, again, it's going to be an ugly. I love this. See, I love the discourse. People say, oh, this is horrible. This is disgusting. People think our founding fathers were sitting around sipping tea. They were beating the hell out of each other. They were fighting like this is the nature of the beast. You know, it did just get a little extra ugly because the intolerant, tolerant people on the left see a man wearing a MAGA hat, punch the 75-year-old man in the face. You go on YouTube, you see it all the time. Just this, yeah, the other day, this kid ran over, a, ran into a Trump tent where they registered people. To just, It's, it's going to get ugly again. It's ugly, but we shall prevail. Scott, this was very enjoyable. And I hope our listeners enjoyed listening to you today. And enjoying hearing your passion. Thanks so yeah, much for that. The word. And thanks for being on the podcast today. Appreciate Happy it. Happy to be here.